Hi and welcome to Shadow Studio 3 for version 2 users. This video is aimed at getting version 2 users up to speed with Shadow Studio 3 as quickly as possible. So let's get started. I add Shadow Studio 3 to this layer and we can compare it easily with Shadow Studio 2 here which is just turned off. And the first thing to know is that an improved version of Shadow Studio 2 lives inside of Shadow Studio 3. It's under renderer and it's been called the standard renderer. And this will feel very familiar to version 2 users. Things that have changed is that the shadow type is now called a light type. That makes more sense because we're either using a directional light or a point light. The point light is the radial shadow type in Shadow Studio 2. What's been added is that we now have this handy user interface controller here which determines the size of the point light and that's called light radius and that determines the softness of the shadow with a larger light casting a softer shadow. The directional light type is pretty much the same but one thing you can do is keyframe the shadow length from a positive number to a negative number and that instantly changes the direction of the light. We also have the inverse shadow checkbox here except you can't keyframe that, that's just a boolean. Now the inner shadow is a checkbox instead of a mutually exclusive shadow type which means you can have an inner shadow with a directional light or you can have an inner shadow with a point light which is really handy. And the inner blending mode we've added all of the different After Effects blending modes so you don't have to compromise. Let's come down to opacity and color. This has quite a few more options because now we have a full RGBA pipeline which enables different kinds of fill modes. We have the solid fill or we have a gradient fill and the gradient fill has this really handy UI widget where you can do a bunch of different things. You can add up to eight different color points. You can offset them, you can cycle them, you can loop them. We cover that in more detail in another video. Another really cool thing that you can do is you can choose the fill influence. So this fill influence is a slider between zero and 100%. And at 100%, you're only seeing the fill mode. So we're only seeing the gradient or the solid fill. However, if we set this to a value less than 100, we would actually be casting shadows based on the color of the layer. So if I set this to 50%, we can see that. Now it's a little boring because this is just a solid white layer, but if you use, say, a bitmap for this, you could create some very interesting effects as seen in our long source RGBA preset, as well as our glossy reflection preset. Both of these presets are inheriting the shadow colors from the layer source itself. Now we come down to easing. This is pretty much the same. We no longer have an easing mode because the ease in and out mode just looked stupid, so we got rid of it. Otherwise, it's exactly the same, except now we have gradient easing, so you can determine how you want to ramp up your gradient values. Texture is similar, but we've added some improvements. We now have an alpha bias to the layer, as well as a matte gamma. What alpha bias does, it will determine how strong your texture should appear in fully opaque parts of your shadow. Increasing the matte gamma above a value of one does essentially the opposite, and that allows you to control the strength of the texture inside semi-transparent areas of your shadow. The quality tab is exactly the same. And compositing is similar, but it's been improved. You can now choose a source blend mode. So by default, Shadow Studio 2 was always placing your source layer above the shadow, unless you were using an inner shadow. But now we have all the blending modes here. And you could, for example, use Silhouette Alpha to subtract the source from the shadow itself. Shadow opacity is now here instead of the master opacity under the opacity tab and buffer expansion has been greatly improved. You should no longer need to tweak this value at all. In Shadow Studio 2, you often had your shadow getting cut off or your layer source layer getting cut off. So we've improved the algorithm that should handle every situation correctly. And if you find that your shadow or source layer is getting cut off, that's a bug, please let us know. Now that we've covered the standard renderer, let's compare that to the ray traced renderer because that's where the real fun begins in Shadow Studio 3. The ray traced renderer not only looks better, it's actually faster to render than the standard renderer. The light types are the same between the standard renderer and the ray traced renderer. However, a really cool thing we can do with a ray traced point light is we can go to inverse shadow, set the light radius to zero and come down here to opacity and color and increase both to 100. Now this looks a bit stupid, but what happens if we check auto shadow length is that it will calculate the exact shadow length that we need so that all points converge at the origin. And it creates this very cool extruded vanishing point look. Now you can use softness with this effect. I just set it to zero to demonstrate the vanishing point, but you can of course use softness and that creates a really cool inverse shadow or essentially you're controlling where the shadow converges to rather than where the actual light is. 
So in normal mode, we define where the light is and the shadow casts accordingly. Whereas with an inverse point, we determine where the shadow essentially ends up. Opacity and color is quite a bit different between the ray traced renderer and the standard renderer. With the ray traced renderer, this opacity start and opacity end, you pretty much won't need to change unless you're doing the long shadow look. So for example, if we set the opacity end to 100% and we change the light softness to zero, we'd get the long shadow look. So if we're not changing the opacity start and end, how do we tweak the intensity of the shadow? Well, we can do that with the shadow length. So the longer the shadow, the more shadow is being accumulated and inversely, if you wanted to make the shadow more subtle, you could increase the opacity easing until it basically disappears. We have the gradient fill inside the ray traced renderer. The only thing we don't have is this fill influence slider, unfortunately, that only works in standard mode and that's due to performance reasons. So if you want to inherit the shadow color from your source layer, you will need to use the standard renderer for now. Easing is pretty much the same. The only difference being that we no longer have the concept of distance with the ray traced renderer. So you don't need to worry about that. Texture is exactly the same. Quality is almost the same. We have the quality preset, change it up or down to increase or decrease the fidelity of your render, which will also impact rendering times. The difference is that we now have an alpha threshold value. So I'll come down to compositing and change the source opacity to zero so that we can see what's happening here. And the alpha threshold determines which pixels will and won't cast a shadow. Pixels with an alpha value less than the alpha threshold won't cast a shadow. And if we say increase this to one, we get this ugly aliased result here because only the fully opaque pixels are casting shadows. And the reason that that looks ugly is that the semi-transparent pixels are what After Effects adds to a process known as anti-aliasing to basically remove the stair-stepping effects. So if we weren't considering those to cast shadows, then we just get this ugly stair-stepped effect. So a value of 0.75 should work nicely. You really shouldn't need to change that. And compositing is exactly the same between both renderers. So in summary, when should you use the ray traced renderer and when should you use standard? Always use the ray traced renderer if you're going for a realistic result or if you're going for the long shadow result. If you need a stylized look, go for the standard renderer or if you need to cast shadows based on the color values of your layer such as the long source or the glossy reflection otherwise that's pretty much the difference between shadow studio 3 and version 2 i hope you enjoy it because it's way fucking better than version 2. available now at